in trouble with your creator. You need need to wake up. You need to wake up and look in the mirror and see what you're doing. What happened to your clothes? What happened to you? What happened? Why did make you think Jesus that it's okay? Jesus doesn't did you, exist. Did, did you know that? Gee, Jesus that doesn't you know exist. that when you come out here that Jesus didn't come exist. with you? Jesus doesn't the Bible says, without him, Jesus you can do nothing. Exist. Without Jesus, Jesus you can't. Exist. You're not going to exist Jesus when you die. Exist. And when you, you die, you're sin, you'll fade away, yeah, yeah, the Bible and you'll end up nothing. But guess what? Jesus Christ yeah. lives forever. No, Jesus, Christ. The Bible is made. Jesus Christ yeah. is God. No, you need not. God. You don't have God. Oh, you're, you're, he didn't you're living for a drug. You're, you're living for sex. You're living for drunkenness. You don't have God, man. Nobody loves you. Nobody cares about you. But God cares for you. God cares enough not to let you continue on in your drunkenness. Jesus has a blue eyes. Not to continue on in your pornography. You he, you'll end up destroyed. You'll end up in hell. Uh, and God's crying yeah, out yeah, to you because you do not I regard the works of God's hands. You yeah, don't regard his works. Nor the operation of his hands. You're in bondage to your sin. I was where you were at. I know I know the turmoil in your heart. I know what it's like to be lost. I know what it's like to be condemned by God. But you don't have to be condemned. You're choosing to go down this slippery slope. You're choosing to continue in your sin. The Bible is continuing in your sin. The Bible has been Your sin is going to find you out. You need love. You need mercy, man. The Bible has been revived. Have you ever heard that mercy tribes over judgment? On the day of judgment, when you die and your cursings come upon you, and your own wickedness, you have to reap what you sow, man. You're going to reap corruption for your drug use. You're going to reap corruption on the day you die. Yo, all about that. But God came to bring mercy to all the drunkards. We're the example of God's mercy. We're the light in this dark place. This is a dark place. This event is dark. It's wicked. What's going on out here? What's going on out here is a bunch of, uh, a bunch of debauchery. A bunch of debauchery. Look, man, I'm not the one using foul language. You are. I don't give a you're the one who needs Jesus. You don't have Jesus. Jesus is fake. Look. Jesus is he fake. He only hides when he is. He's fucking fake. Well, God will abide in him. Jesus has blue eyes and he's blue. Hey, your heart is You're fake. Your heart is not real. Jesus is You have nothing he's good dead. in you, man. You have nothing good in you. You have nothing to live for. You're not abundantly satisfied with the goodness of God's house. You're a house what full of God? demons. What I'm God? satisfied with the goodness of God's Jesus house. God came Jesus upon me. Jesus Christ came close to me in my Yo, hour of need. I'm an example of forgiveness and truth. You have no truth. The Bible says in 1 Peter, it says, having purified your souls uh, by, by obeying the truth through the spirit and sincere love of the brethren. You don't yeah, love your yeah, brother. Yeah, you yeah, love yeah, marijuana. Yeah, you you love to have sex with all the whores out here. You're seeking for a good time with the whores. You don't understand. You don't have the love of God. You don't have the goodness of God. You don't have the sin of The Bible is sin, Your sin is tormenting you. You're going to be tormented in forever in a lake of fire. In a lake of fire. On the day that you die, because you didn't repent, you'll be tormented. And I don't want you to go to hell. I don't want you to end up in hell when you die. You need the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible says set your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. There's a, the, today's the day that you can have the revelation of Jesus. You don't have it going in here. No, you don't have Jesus going in here. That's, that's, that's what you need to wake up to. You're not going to be a Christian and go to heaven and have this party. You're going to have to choose your lesbianism or choose Jesus. You've chosen your wickedness. You've chosen the way of Satan. True, yes. Now turn back. Now turn back. The bridge is out. The bridge is out. When you die, you have no hope. You're without hope. You're without God. You're ensnared in an evil work. And the Bible says you will not escape. You will not escape. No. The Bible says when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. You're not going to escape. You might escape cancer. You might escape cancer for your cigarette smoking, but you will not escape God's judgment when you die in your sin. And this is sin out here. This is the epitome of sin, this event. Ultra, ultra music fest. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says that God's going to arise against the house of evildoers. You're an evildoer out here. You're seeking to do evil, and you don't know God. You don't know anything about God. You don't know what Jesus Christ is all about. You think Jesus is excusing this? Yeah, but you're exchanging the, your soul. You're exchanging eternal life for what? For Molly? For Molly? 
Yeah, then you get sick, and you get sick, and you start, you start, you know, your head starts hurting you, your hangovers, and you're, you're, you're puking, and you're spending your money, and then you really need God, you need life, and you guess what? You wasted it. You're prodigal living. You've wasted your life by prodigal living. Why don't you return like the prodigal son and have, have God put on you the best robe and, and put on you a ring on your finger and kill the fatted calf for you? That's what God wants to do. God wants to bless you. God wants to forgive you, but it's not going to happen as you continue to harden your neck. You're hardening your heart out here. You're hard hearted, calloused in your heart. Nothing good left out here for lesbians and homosexuals. Nothing good for the for fornicators but judgment. God's going to give the judgment to the wicked. And right now you're wicked. Right now you don't know. You don't have no clue what's going to happen to you. You don't even know what evil can fall upon you on the day that you die. I'm concerned for my neighbor. I love my neighbor. I know. I know that you need to wake up. Get out, get, get out of this event. Go home. Seek God. Repent. That Jesus Christ might come to you. And show you his goodness, the paths of righteousness in Christ. The Bible says, says the word of the Lord is right. All his work is done in truth. He gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap. He lays up the deep and storehouses. The God who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. I come in his name. In the name of Jesus Christ. You need Jesus. We're a nation that, that says they have Jesus, but you don't have Jesus out here. No. You don't have anything to do. Jesus has nothing to do with your life out here. God retracts from the wicked. The Bible says God will hide his face from you in your sin. You can't be out here and have the Holy Spirit with you guiding you. The Bible says, Bible says, don't be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding, which must be harnessed with bit and bridle, else they will not come near to you. The Bible says, God says, I will guide you with my eye. God wants to guide you with his eye, the Holy Spirit that comes in you. You're, you need to be born again. He said he's born already. You're going to die twice. You're born once into this, into this body and you don't repent. You're going to die twice. You're going to die in your body and then your soul's going to perish in the lake of fire. Are you, do you know what you're risking when you do these drugs out here? Do you know what you're risking when you look at pornography every week? Do you understand it's your soul? The Bible says the soul that sins is going to die. You don't think it's going to happen until it's too late. Until it's too late. The Bible says because the sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. The hearts of the sons of men are fully set in them to do evil. Your heart is fully set in you to do evil out here today because God's not judged you yet, because you're not in hell yet. But you know deep down inside, nobody wants to go to hell. Nobody wants to be abandoned by God because that's what hell is. Hell is the place for the abandoned ones, the forgotten ones. You're forsook by God. You're forsooken by God. He forsakes the works of his own hands, created by God to live a life on earth becoming of Jesus Christ and you've used it for harlotry. You've used it for your sin, your drugs, your alcohol, your rebellion. But I know, I know the Bible says, speak my words to them whether they hear or whether they refuse for they are a rebellious house. Your rebellion has reached to heaven. Therefore God spoke into my ear in the inner room and I'm here to proclaim it from the housetops. You're in trouble with God. Look at your shirt. Look at your lewdness. Look at your drunkenness. How far, how far have you fallen from he grace? Oh no, you're following the devil, the God, the God of hate. Loves you, more than all of us. you hate God. You hate me because you love sin. Don't you know the Bible says it says, He who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God whom he has not seen. You don't love God. You don't love your brother. You're causing your brother to sin. You're in danger. You're in danger. I'm here to give you a stark warning. I don't want your blood on my hands. The Bible says you shall warn the wicked when you see him in his wickedness. Yeah, no, you're, you're, you're out here. You're a partier. You're a rebel. You need to put your shun and be a man of integrity. You're not walking in your integrity out here. Therefore, God's not going to redeem you. God's not going to save you. The Bible says, as for me, I've walked in my integrity. Redeem me and be merciful to me. My foot stands in an even place. Your foot is on slippery slopes. You're walking on the broad path, the shaky ground. You're not building your house upon the rock. Jesus says the rock. You're, you're not bearing fruit. You're not bearing the fruit of God. Oh, uh, you laugh and scoff concerning oppression. You speak wickedly concerning the judgment to come. Man, you mock God. You end up condemned on the day you die. You know, nobody fears God out here until it's too late and you're, what, you're crying for God's mercy. You can cry for God's mercy. The Bible says, blessed be the Lord. 
who has heard the voice of my supplications. For the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Who do your heart trust in? What are you trusting in? Another drunken party? Another sex party? Another, another drug use party? You're trusting in those things. Just admit it, man. You're strengthening yourself and your wickedness. You can't even go to bed unless you've done evil. You, your sleep is taken from you unless you make someone stumble. Is that for your puking? No, it's for Is that for your puking, that garbage bag there? It's for poncho. You're going to open that up and barf into that after you do all that molly and do all those drugs and drink all that alcohol? It's poncho. God is God's, God's concern for you. You're vile. Your works are vile before God. You're filthy. Look at you. What happened to your clothes? Yeah, because because all the wicked agree that women should show their bodies off. Now it's okay before God. You think that God is not angry with the wicked every day? The Bible says so. The Bible says he is indeed angry with the wicked every day. If you don't turn back, God's going to bend his bow. God's going to sharpen his sword. He's going to prepare for himself instruments of death. There's death coming for your whorish acts. There's instruments of destruction that God is warning you about. You're not fearing God. You're not honoring Jesus. You're in danger. Your soul, sir. Who loves you? Who cares for you? To cry out to you. Not your parents. Not your friends. They don't care for you. They give you all your wicked money and stuff that you're using for sin, for sex. You need to use it for God. You keep spending your money and time on your on your sin, and you're going to waste away. You're going to pine away in your sins. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says, you said the children of your people say the way of the Lord is not fair. But it is your way that is not fair. It is your way that is not fair. For when the righteous turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, he shall die because of it. But when the wicked turns from his wickedness and does what is lawful and right, he shall live because of it. And you say the way of the Lord is not fair. Hear, O house of Miami, I will judge every one of you according to your ways, saith God. Are you ready to be judged according to your wicked ways? You need to judge according to your wicked ways. I'm telling you what Jesus said through the prophet Ezekiel, writing out of the Bible. Don't you understand? God is true. You're a liar. You're a liar, thou God. You're following the liar. The fire lies. The devil. The devil led you. He lied to this woman to tell her to wear this outfit, to put smiley faces on her, her underwear, and come out to the streets of Miami Beach, thinking that God doesn't see you. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. God sees your good, but your evil is, is, is outweighing your good. You think you're good enough to go to heaven, you say. Oh, are you bad enough to go to hell? Have you done enough bad things to deserve hell? You don't understand the seriousness of God's judgment, His perfection. God is beauty. God is splendor and grandeur and awesome. God providing for His people by the goodness of His house, by the abundance of His house. The Bible says, in His light we see light. Oh, the Bible says it's like a river flowing clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God. And in the middle of the streets, and on every side of the river, it says there shall be a tree of life that gives 12 fruits bearing it in this season. But you want to eat from the tree of life? Living forever with God? Protected by God? Uh, hedged in by God? Right now, you're an open duck for the devil. The devil's got you by the, by the groin, leading you around in your sin. Your disgusting lifestyle, I've been there. I know the decrepitness, the debaseness. you like a worm slithering around in the gutter in your sexual morality. Don't you understand? You need to repent. This is called preaching, sir. You're, you're in your cinema. You can't see straight. You're nearsighted. I see it far off. I see what's going to happen when you die, when you're crying. When you're crying and wailing before God. And then when God says, I gave you time to repent. Church. And you're a hypocrite then. You're the definition of a hypocrite when you go to church and you come out here and you live for the devil. And you're living for the devil. What kind of church go around you? Going to church on Sunday, coming out here worshiping the devil on Saturday. You're worshiping the devil. You're worshiping your belly. You need the true worship that you worship God in spirit and in truth. Oh, you're going to be judged by God, all right. He's a just judge, too. He's not like you. He's not like you. He doesn't give uneven scales. Making an excuse for your masturbation. Making an excuse for your pot smoking. Making an excuse for all these things. Why don't you humble yourself before God? Why don't you admit to God that your sin is, is, is going to destroy you? 
Your sin is going to, it's a, it's an, it's a, the law of the sin, uh, it says the law of sin and death. It's a law. It produces death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. I came to profess to you about the gift. But you don't want the gift. You see, when you go into this party here, you're denying the gift that God offers you today. And that's why I'm concerned. God wants to justify you. God is just and the justifier of, of the one who has faith in Jesus. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. Where is your faith, man? What kind of faith do you have to come out here and party? And then what? Think that it's okay? Think that God's just going to let you in slide into heaven in your sin? It's not how it works. It's not how it works. You see, God's got plans for you that you would repent, that you would fear God, turn to God, love God. But right now you love your sin, love when you love God. You're in danger of, God, of God's holy wrath. God's got holy wrath for the wicked, the ones who don't bear good fruit. All the Bible says, it says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes it away. Well, what's going to happen if God takes you away? What, is, what does God do with the branches that, take, that he takes away? It says they gather them and they throw them into the fire and they are burned. You're going to be burned. You're getting burned by these alcohol companies. You're getting burned by the techno companies, the techno music festivals. They're taking your money. They're taking your soul. They're buying and selling the bodies and souls of men. They've deceived you. They've made merchandise of you. You women, you women are supposed to be, uh, you know, you know, you know, precious uh, uh, mothers and, and wives and husbands. Yeah, you come out here and you live lesbian lifestyles. You won't even love a man. You won't even. You don't even know what's good anymore. You don't turn your life into a, a party. You want you, you smoke weed? Want you smoke weed and drink alcohol for the first breakfast and put your alcohol in your cereal too? I want you put your rum in your cereal. And, and mix in your years. alcohol and your drunkenness. It's over five years. You hey, hey, about hey, hey, your mouth is not clean. Okay. You're not clean. Oh, no, I said a curse word. Yeah, that's dangerous. Don't touch my equipment. The wicked man you are. I pray God gives you mercy. Violent, wicked. You need Jesus. You need to understand what's happened to you. Oh, how far you have fallen from God's love. Not understanding who God is. Not seeing who the, what the truth really is. You need the truth that you might be made free. He who continues in my word, Jesus said, will become my disciple indeed. He'll know the truth and the truth will make him free. Are you free today? No, you're led around by various lusts. You're led around by, by these evil spirits. You're led around by your wicked friends. You go wherever the, the crowd goes. You're going with the flow. And the flow is leading into the lava. There's lava flows in the day of judgment for sinners. Like a fire when you get cast out. When you get cast out, you're going to be in the flow, all right? You're going to be in the flow of hell. And you're going to be wishing and wailing and weeping and gnashing your teeth. Or just, just pleading for some sort of a hope of light on that day. But there'll be none there. He will last your life. You turn into the shadow of death. And in the dense darkness, Jeremiah said. There's dense darkness for sinners. The Bible says, it says, the blackness of darkness will be for you if you don't repent. Eh, man, nobody nobody sees it. Nobody has any understanding, sees the signs of your life. You're getting older, and these older women still trying to show their bodies off. Still trying to live lewdly. Still trying to live full of lust. But your Bible says, it says, we have escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Your lust is corrupting your very body, and you need to escape that. Escape that. You're putting all your, your glory in sh what is shameful. How long, will oh, you sons of men, will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love worthlessness and seek falsehood? But know that the Lord has set apart for himself him who is godly. Psalms 4 says, are you godly? Not out here. Not out here. God is not leading you out here to do what you're doing out here. No, God led us here. God led me here. And I have a message for you to be separate from all this. I used to be a sinner. I used to be a drunkard. And I walk by faith. I see God. I humble myself. I say, God, I can't do it without you. God, I'm weak. But when I'm weak, he's strong. His grace is sufficient for me. You see, I have his grace at work in my life. And I have his terror. <laughs> Terrified of God. Terrified of what kind of judgments could fall upon me. That I could be destroyed. Everything that's good in me could be turned into wicked or uh, disheartening. You see, what you're doing now is you're defying deceptive spirits of alcohol. Just deceptive spirits 
of sexual morality, deception, unrighteous deception among those that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Unrighteous deception. Oh, you see, man, the Bible says it says it says that uh, because they suppress the truth in unrighteousness. What may be known of God has been made known to them because God has shown it to them. God showed you. God showed you the truth, and yet you denied it, and you went to your homosexuality. He showed you the truth that marriage is honorable. The bed is supposed to be undefiled. Your body's a temple. You know your body's a temple, but yet you defile it with evil cigarette smoke. You defile it with all these things. And yet God says, why won't you be cleansed that I might dwell with you? You know, the Bible says he who rules over men must be just, relying in the fear of the Lord. Oh, it says he'll be like a, a light of the morning on a day without clouds when the sun rises. Like the tender grass springing out of the earth after a clear shining of the rain. But the sons of the rebellion are not so, for they cannot be taken with hands. But he who touches them must be armed with iron and a shaft of a spear. You see, God can't take you in your sin. You prick him. You prick him. And so God says, bring me that iron. Bring me that shaft of the spear. Let me corral those sinners near to the near to the lake of fire. Let me push them over there to where the fire is going to start up and destroy them. God can't take you in your sin. You're a son of rebellion. The Bible says they'll be utterly burned in their place. You're going to be utterly consumed in tears on the day you die in your sin. You need to turn to Jesus and escape this judgment. It's fallen upon you. You're in Miami, the den of sin, the city of sin. Sodom and Gomorrah all over again here in the streets of America in this city. Sodom and Gomorrah! What happened to those wicked sinners? They were consumed utterly. Utterly forsaken by God. Not just a little bit. No, they were ground into powder by, by sulfur and brimstone. A burning wind, the Bible says, is a portion of their cup. Man, your cup. You're drinking down iniquity. You're drinking it down. You're drinking your sin. And God is concerned. Why won't you drink from his cup? Why won't you bear your cross? Why won't you bear your cross and be baptized with the baptism of Jesus? Baptize him with the spirit of fire. You know, when the spirit comes in you, it cleanses you, gives you hope, gives you, gives you a new life, gives you a new wardrobe, ladies. Why do you mistreat your body? Why do you disgrace what God gave you for your husband? It's unholy, unrighteous, ungodly, unlovely. It's disgusting, impure, unjust. But yet God says, you know what, I'll forgive them. I'll cleanse them. I'll do a mighty work in their life through Jesus. Do you believe that Jesus can change you, young ladies? Are you an unbeliever? You don't think that God can change you for your lesbianism? You don't think God, he who made the eye does he not see? He who planted the ear does he not hear? He who instructs the nations, does he not correct? What is the correction that you need? That God will make straight those ways that are crooked in your life. It's crooked what you're doing. Your drunkenness is crooked. It's rough. It's not smooth. It's a high and prideful way. It needs to be brought low. You think too much of yourself. You don't understand what love is. You don't understand that when we come out here to cry out to you, to pray our hearts to you, that we're coming below you. That she might be lifted up. She might inherit a blessing. The blessing of God comes when God forgives. It comes when God chastens those he loves. You need the discipline of God. Your parents didn't, didn't discipline you. Your parents didn't teach you about the fear of God. Man, the Bible says, train up a child in the way he will go. He will not depart from when he gets old. You know, you've departed from God, and God is coming to you. You're the lost sheep. The Bible says he left the 99 came after the one. It's not the world, need a physician, it's those who are sick. You're sick. God came, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. You're qualified. You're a sinner, are you not? Are you not a sinner out here? You're qualified to have repentance, the calling of God. The gifts and callings of God are without, are irrevocable. But if you deny this calling, you're denying that. You're not amen in anything, man. You're not amen in God. You're going in here. You're cursing. You don't love God. And I'm doing drugs. Yeah, you should go to jail. You should go to jail. That's where you belong. Enemy of society. Enemy of society when you do drugs. You're destroying your body. You're destroying people's lives around you. It's the degradation of this country. It's the degradation of your soul, your mind, your heart. Everything's corrupt, isn't it? Isn't everything corrupt, man? You just love porn, don't you? I love porn. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's sad, man. What kind of husband would you be to your wife? What kind of husband would you be? What kind of example would you be to your kids? 
Oh, I love porn, little Johnny. I love porn. Come, son, let's all join in together. You might as well. You might as well have an orgy with your kids, too. Yeah. Yeah, you watch all that, all that crazy, just disgusting stuff on the internet. You know, God, you know, the, now, now the porn, it's just like, oh, yes, brother and sister have sex. You know, everybody has sex together. Yeah, then you then, then all of a sudden, then it all comes down on you like a huge rock. And then it weighs on you and you realize just how destroyed you are, just how much just how much death you've already let in your life. Not just a little bit, you've, you've opened the floodgates for these demons in your life. Right. Don't you understand these demons are stronger than you? They'll, they'll eat you up, man. Demons have sharp teeth. Demons have sharp teeth. When they get a hold of you, the Bible says they'll wrap you up and they'll lead you away. You'll be caught in the cords of your sin. That's why you drink alcohol, get drunk, get smoke weed. And you're caught by those demons. There's, there's principalities and powers in those things. And when they get a hold of you, you need God to release you. God releases the prisoners. God says he brings out those who are bound into prosperity. But the rebellious dwell in a dry land. You're rebellious. And you dwell in a dry land. Be, be sure of this. God will make sure your land is dry. He'll make sure that you're, that you're quenched and you have nothing to drink. And you'll choose. You can put more alcohol into your body and destroy your liver and get cotton mouth and you smoke weed and destroy your muscles and control your swallowing. Maybe end up like me with residual heart failure someday. But God wants to give you fountains of living water flowing from his throne, from the presence of God. That's what we came here to give you, the water of life. You freely give the water of life, clear as crystal. It's pure. This word that I speak has been tried seven times in a fire, like a like silver in a furnace of earth. God will keep it forever. God keeps his word. God is not like your ungodly, wicked friends. What is this, Proverbs 16, 3? You're not, you're not a Proverbs person. You're a sinner. You need the love of God. You know, you tattoo scriptures on your arms, but you don't have the Holy Spirit living in your heart. When you come out here, it's clear evidence that you're lost. It's clear evidence that you've departed from the truth. You've given heed to seducing spirits. Doctrines of devils, the Bible calls them. This is a doctrine of devils out here. This is, this is not a good time. This is you being deceived, being led away into the pit. Hey, judge lest you be judged. Hey, I'm willing to be under this judgment. I don't want to have the F word coming out of my mouth. That's right. I'm under that judgment. I say, hey, Lord, man, what was me if I used that, that foul language? I'm under that judgment. I know better. I know better. I fear God. true a bunch of hoes out here a bunch of horrors out here oh yeah he, well, he doesn't want you to be that way and end up destroyed you become righteous you've chosen your path just live it hey you made your bed you might as well live it now young people young people do you know what god did for you by sending his son in, the, in, his, in, in the likeness of sinful flesh, on account of sin, he condemns sin in the flesh. Jesus condemns your sin. Why won't you condemn it? Why won't you condemn the sin in your life? Why won't you stand against the evil work in your life and, and, and confess and repent? Instead, you put curse words on your shirt. Instead, you, instead you women just pull your shirt down and wear your underwear out here. And, you know, some, some women out here, they don't even have a, a bra on. They just put body paint on their nipples. And God is, God is just... God, God is... Uh, He's putting in a God is putting a grieved spirit in me when I see this stuff. But I just know I know how much you're using each other. Just you use drugs, you use each other. You're all used up, man. You're like you're like used toilet paper out here. Fit for fit for the for the toilet, just to be flushed down by God on the day of judgment. That's what sinners get in the day of judgment. That's what Jesus taught. Did you know that? Jesus said that the kingdom of God's like it unto a man who casts his net into the sea, gathered some of every kind of fish. Gathered the good into vessels, praise God, but he threw the bad away. You're bad. You're going to get thrown away. You're like a catfish that gets chucked into the garbage. That's the kingdom of God. That's what the kingdom of God is like. It's a day that comes suddenly, like a snare upon the whole earth, and God's just going to say, you know what? Eh, time's up. I gave them enough time. He kept smoking weed. He kept looking at porn. He wouldn't seek me. He didn't even care about the operation of my hands. How I save, how I cleanse, how I redeem, how I love. You don't love God. That's your problem. You say that the message is not loving enough. But Jesus said, he said, 
As the Father has loved me, so I love you. How did the Father love Jesus? He let him go to the cross. I love the devil. Oh, and guess what? You're going to be destroyed. No, it's not. No, it's not. The devil's going to hell. The Bible says all those who follow him will end up there with him. You better le listen to... Yeah, you could have just gotten run over and ended up in hell sooner than you didn't need to. Follow the devil. Better count the cost. Count the cost. Live for Jesus. You know that you can't... See, you know that you can't live this way and be a Christian. Therefore, you say, I worship the devil. That's about the most honest answer I hear that I've heard so far. You're worshiping the devil. Just uh, Everybody here is worshiping the devil. You are a devil worshiper out here. Oh, no, I worship God. I would never, You never catch me in this place partying, not unless uh, I went back to my sin. But, oh, man, I crucify those things. I fear God. I know that there's, there's wicked things in there. You're going to bring them home with you, see? Just like your STDs, you bring them home, you're going to bring that, the demons home with you. It's not, what, it's not what happens in Miami stays in Miami. You traveled down here, spent your money, your time, you went through all of this effort. God's going to make sure you reap what you sow. God's going to make sure you get what you pay for. That's the only, that's what God's good at that. So if you want to come here and you want to sow to the flesh and all this fun stuff that you say is fun, well, you're going to get the, the, the corruption of, of judgment. No, no, the Bible says uh, judge righteous judgment. I'm concerned for you. I don't want you to have a, a child in a wedlock and that poor child suffer between a broken marriage. I don't want you to be judged. See, the Bible's full of judgment. You see, you don't, you don't understand what justice is. Everybody wants justice, but nobody wants the judgment to get the justice. You can't have justice without judgment, okay? You're unjust. You're unjust. That's what's wrong with you. You don't have even scales. You love marijuana. You love your sex. You love your drugs. And guess what? You're used. Used and abused, man. Your pornography is abusing and wearing your soul out. You're wore out. Like a pair of dirty socks with holes in them. Wore out. Nothing to renew you. You know, the Bible says when you come to God, it says outwardly you may perish, but inwardly you're renewed every day. Here he comes Jesus again. Here he comes again. Under conviction, I know. Under conviction, I know. Yeah, some of the women came out to Ultra a few years ago. They got a little older. Their bodies are sagging a little bit more. Bodies are sagging. Gets old. Your body, all this stuff gets old. But you know what? The Spirit of God renews. Inward man is renewed every day. And that's what I'm here to tell you. You need to be renewed out of your sin, out of your lifestyle of wickedness, that you might have a new body on the day you die. Because right now you're going to receive a body not like the angels. You're going to receive a body like the devils, and you'll end up destroyed. What are you doing out here? Um, what are you doing out here? No, I want to ask you a question, sir. Uh-huh. What is God? What is, what God? is God? Yeah. Uh, he's God. But what represents God? What represents God to you? Well, well, I mean, I mean, the Bible, Bible says Jesus is the image of the Godhead bodily. So I looked at Jesus. Well, I don't know. Anything, I don't know anything about God without Jesus because Jesus, Jesus is the image of God. So I don't have it. Yeah. So what represents Jesus? He's the name of God. Okay, but don't you think Jesus well, 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 represents love? love yeah. Well, what, are, what are you doing out here? Are you say soul hunter? Yeah, I'm, I'm talking to you. If you want to are, are you guys show, handing tracks out and stuff or something? If you are representing Jesus. You're not representing Jesus by the way you're dressed. You're representing God. You're representing, you know, this whole, this whole, uh, uh, you know, loose culture. You're loose when you dress that way. You, you're promoting, you're promoting, you're promoting sexual immorality, young lady. Oh my Actions speak louder than words. Have you ever heard that? Ultra. But you understand? That's lewd. The Bible says that you're like a swift dromedary breaking loose in her ways. That's in Jeremiah chapter two. When you dress like, when you dress like a prostitute and you dress that way, you're breaking loose. I'm not talking about you. I'm not talking about you. Huh? I, I, I look away from that. I look away from this woman. This poor woman's future husband. Are you married? Are you married? Well, that's not your business. That's okay. Okay, you don't have to answer me, but I'm concerned for your. I'm concerned for your. I'm concerned for your, your future husband. I'm concerned for that man that he. You know what? I'm going to tell you two things. Jesus said, love your God and love your neighbor. What is love? You don't know what love is. You have no clue what love is. You love yourself. You're loving yourself. You're loving what you're loving your own life. Jesus said, whoever, whoever loves his life. Look, look, can I give you one Bible verse? I do care for you. I do care for you. I'm not here to, to revile you. Jesus said in John chapter 12, he said, he who loves his life will lose it. But whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. 
So what I'm really after is, hey, are people really hating their life? You love your life. Just be honest. Don't you love your life? I love my life. Okay, well, well if, you, if you wanted to hate your life, then you would have to do things that are godly. A godly woman dresses modestly, okay? The Bible says 1 Timothy 2. So, so are you dressed modestly? Can you say that honestly before me and God? All these witnesses out here. Is she dressed modestly, everybody? What do you think? God knows your clothes. I got one witness. Go ahead, though. I'm listening to you. What is, what is God? What, the, way I, the way you are talking to me, is that godly? Of course, yeah. The Bible says. So calling me a prostitute is not No, 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 just like a prostitute. Prostitutes are godly. Yeah, it is. Cause here's, can, I, can I explain to you why? Can I explain to you why? Let me give you one. I gave you the chance to talk. Go ahead. Go ahead. So do you think that instead of calling someone a prostitute, no, no, I said you're dressed like a prostitute. Yeah. Now you're judging. No, no, no. prostitutes no. dress and reveal their body. That's a good judgment. Go ahead. He wanted me to listen to Jesus and to God because uh, I, I see myself as a godly woman. You think you're a godly woman? Don't you think that I mean, the think words of hate? Uh -huh. You're not going to reach no one's heart if you use the yeah, words of hate. Okay. Choose your words with let me, God. Let me give you a couple Bible verses. I believe the Bible, okay? I base my Christianity on the Bible. Jesus said, Jesus said this, uh, young lady. He said, as many as I love, I rebuke and even chasten. You know what chasten is? That's when, they're about, uh, when a little kid gets beat up, by, not beat, but, you know, disciplined or spanked by their parents. So Jesus, his love, he says, is to rebuke and to chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. So if you want to be a godly woman, then you need to be zealous and repent of any sin in your life. So you're I know what sin is. I'm a sin, I'm not going to have the forgiveness of, of God. Again, I, I believe the Bible. The Bible says in Isaiah 128, it says uh -huh. the, the destruction of sinners and trans... So Hold on, let me finish, let me finish. I'm almost done. The destruction of sinners and transgressors shall be together, and those who forsake the Lord shall be consumed. Sinners and transgressors, they break God's law, they, they actually get destroyed. That's what Isaiah 1 says.